Hello everyone, this is Tiger Gaming here, and today I want to have a little guide on the frost escalation. Now, I do have a new lo I do have no load loadouts for like each element. Now, that's like a new update. But today I'm just going to be going over a couple things. One, what's best to use in the talent tree for the for frost escalation. Two, what the boons are used for. And free the explanation of them. So, yeah. Without further ado, if you did like, if you do like this uh, little t guide or something, please do a like. And if you're new here, do subscribe. We are actually getting closer and closer to 100 subs. So if you do like, it will really help me out. But without further ado, let's get into the talent tree. So now, we're, now we're here in the talent tree. Sorry that I haven't got it level 25. I'm still trying to work on it. It's just that it's taking fucking forever. But the the main things that you want to have, if I just reset this, is the is it which one is it? Is the insulated gear? First white rises ten percent slower. You need this for literally every single version. This is gonna help you quite a lot. Based on the things. <coughs> uh, you also need this. I believe. Uh, let me just have a read. Even Frost Defender Amp. I mean, this one's not really. You know, give is good, but you know, it's decent. So that's good. Uh, this you would need the movement speed, because uh, with Frost Escalation, you're very far away from each zone. And you have to pick up these things called braziers. The movement speed will help you get there way more faster. And just because it says 5, 10 and 15, may not seem much. But trust me, it is a big change in the gameplay. Uh, if you're going for a wound build, I suggest going for this one as well. Uh, grants 5% passive part damage converted to wound damage. This will help you get more wound damage when using a war pike or something that gives wounding. Like chain blades or something. Of course you also want insulated gear because you need to stack them every time. This is really good for stagger builds. So it grants 5% passive stagger per hit. This will go up to 15 as well as the far size precision. So you kind of want to stack that up high. I don't think... Right, so hot and cold, I don't think you would actually need this. Because, you know, there's perks in... There's like amps inside Frost Escalation that you would be able to pick up. That increases your attack speed. So, you wouldn't need it. So, inside gear, always. Okay, Bold Wolf. Guarantee. It's a guarantee. Because Brazers continue to prevent phosphite buildup for 8 seconds after leaving. This is going to this is gonna help keep your phosphite towards zero for the remainder of the of like the travel from one area to another. So this is really good. Uh, passive damage reduction. Hell yes. Hell yes. Because here's the thing about what the Moira's reinforcement and the frost escalation the frost escalation it melts your health bar I i'm saying that you get one shot every time and it's just horrible so getting the damage reduction up would be really good uh heated blade it could it could be a hit or miss based on which one absorbing the flame from bozo causes your next attack to deal 50 percent more damage and you can hold multiple of them so It'll be doing 1.5 times the amount of damage that it was doing for that many of attacks. So it's it's decent, but I don't know if you would actually if you would want to run it. It's based on your choice. To me, preferably, I quite like running it. This warm blooded, 100% definite. The first time you become frostburn, immediately reduce your frostbite build up by 50%. This will make you no longer frostbitten, 
and you could just continue fighting. Uh, passive attack damage. Yeah, uh, you could do this if you want. Uh, I would probably do it. And now I don't have enough for any of these. But, but yeah, that's that's what I would go for. That's something that I would go for. But if we go over here, even though I don't have any points, so I'm still look at it. This this never bothered me, but um, no amp or talent. I don't like. Don't like it. I tried it, and I kept on getting frost, getting the frostbite, like maximum. It was horrible. Um, if you're going for a crit build, I suggest the lucky strikes, talent, amp that up as much as you want. It's gonna be really good. Uh, cold rush. That's gonna be really good, as well. When you're in a double, the double um, the double behemoth battles. When one dies, you get like 10% increased damage, 50% increased attack speed, and 25% increased move speed. So, whether it's a single or a double, you could still run super fast with that. So that's gonna be really good. And last one, definitely these. I have to, I would have to say get all of these if you can, because they're really good. So, what is it? Let's look at the aspect of the warrior. Critical guys deal 10% more damage. This is increased to 20% if you are the avatar of destruction, which is the crit build. 2% uh, increased attack speed. And it increases to 4 if you're avatar of control. I believe this one is the stagger. Yeah, when the behemoths come staggered. Didn't read it. Um, aspect of the scout. When the behemoth part is wounded. So this is the wound one, uh, gain 2% increased damage for the remainder of it. This increases to 4% if you are the avatar's subtlety. So this one would be working with the execution spearhead, I believe it's called, where you actually gain 6% every time a wounded part is broken. This would be really good for it, because then you'll be going up to probably around 120% uh, increased damage. So that would be really good. Actually, is it? No. I think I'm thinking that wrong. I think it's like 80, for 80, 80 something percent. So it's still good. It's still good. Pulse 25 healing to all uh, allies with a short distance every 5 seconds. So this one is when you get shield. I'll be talking about this one. Because I think a lot of people are not picking it up. Even though it's really fucking good. Yeah, that's the that's all of them. That's all of the tantry. So I will be like kind of circling which ones I'd say to get. Okay, let me explain why I didn't do this. Is because I looked around the stickers on the editing and I could not find one. So I'm actually not going to be doing this. I'm sorry. But um, yeah. So that's that's tantry. Let's just go into frost escalation. Okay, so we are finally in to the frost escalation. I'm not going to be going over there just yet. But I'm going to be talking about these avatar, like, boons or something you would call them. So, this one. So, actually, before I actually get into every single one, you want to look at them in every single escalation type. So, with stagger, you would think blaze. Wound, umbral, crit shock and the shield to be terror and this, this is the reason why so with avatar destruction this is the shock escalation one you want to you kind of want to build your loadout based on crit chance you're already doing that from shock escalation which i believe most people would want to do they want to pick this up best thing to do Find a shock escalation build and go wild. Because this is actually pretty good. So I'll just quickly grab this. Now with the with this one, Avatar of Subtlety, you increase wound damage. And with this one you want to go for an umbral build, probably like a radiant war pike or something. Why am I slanted? Never mind. But yeah, you want to go for like a Umbral Warpike build, 
or an Umbral Chain Blaze build. They'll in they'll always give a uh, wound in, probably something like Bard or um what's it, what's the other ones? I can't remember the other cells. But I know that Barbed is one of them. I think Acidic is also another. We go to this one now. So this one, it gives four shield every time you attack. This would be great with Skarn. I think the best thing to use for this is Ard is the Ardent Cyclone with the Skarn Sword using the Agora Sword. So because because I chose the Skarn Sword, is because it gives forty shield every time you do damage. And that's to yourself. But with your allies, it'll be doing 4%. This is going to be really good for your team. Specifically use a... I don't know, a... What, what is it? What is it? Which one is it? I can't remember. There's a, sl a, sl a lantern that gives shield. I think it is the Skarn one. I think you have to use a Skarn lantern for that. It will give shield towards your teammates, I believe. Or it's the recruit one. So, I don't know, have wild on that one. I'll have to look further into this one. And the avatar of control. So, this one is the stagger damage. This one's the blaze escalation. So, get a hammer, get an axe, or get strikers. Make... A stagger build, go to a blaze escalation and literally test it. This would help you prepare for frost. Actually, all these will. If you pick crit, go to shock, test your weapon, test your loadout, and then come into here. Same as that, same as the umbral, same as terror, same as blades, same as blades. Test your weapon, then go into frost and see for yourself. <coughs> so this is the this is going to be the avatar of destruction so right now i am using a crit chance build as you tell i'm they say use togador they, they say use um what is it hellion chain blades but right now i'm going to be using togador since you know it's the legendary version of a blaze weapon so i thought why not this is all based on stagger and they told me to use this so then I can get the lightning bolt and get attack speed with it. So without further ado, let's just actually show you this crit chance build. See, look at that. So I got this build from somewhere. I can't. I actually can't remember, but it's called an, the shock escalation tank build. And look at that, simple. I know I'm doing 1 to 13, but that's really quick. It's really quick. Now what do we get here? Okay, we can pick up uh, Executioner. <coughs> yeah, as I was saying, just use like... Anything based on es the escalate the past escalations because them are gonna help you out in the long run. I see people always bringing up frost escalation builds, saying how what to use. I think it's very simple. I think it's very simple that you know you just use the same builds that you've been using this entire time. No, that, I, it's what I'm quite not, quite not understanding. So this is this is basically what the Avatar of Destruction does. It literally gives you more crit chance, and if you get the amps, you'll be able to do even more damage. So there you go. The Avatar of Destruction also grants you increased ten percent increased move speed and reduced sprint costs, and grants a guaranteed crit after a short time, short sprint. You you want to use this with the destruction of the um 
the the crit shells because this is going to help you quite a lot based on what you're going to be doing. There's also like different kind of amps for this as well. I think there's like three separate ones. I can't remember fully, but there was this one and the 75% increased crit damage. Think of that one like a like a scuffed. Was it virtual control? Just think of it like that, and then you'll be grand. Honestly. So here we go, defrost Nasha. I always have trouble with this one. I didn't mean to use that. Well, look how much damage I'm doing already. See, I know I used the Torgador thing, which is something I didn't intend. Honestly, am I wrong to say that this literally just gives the things? This issue is based on escalations, like past escalations and stuff. That's why there's avatars. So, it is another one. The avatar destruction also heals all slayers for a small percentage. That's going to be really helpful. I don't believe that's actually a thing in shock escalation but it's really good say like your slayers are a bit low on health bang crit damage you can instantly get that to full health and give or take three seconds it's that easy um no i know i'm doing the 1 to 13 but honestly like, this is what it is. I feel like people are turning a blind eye against this. I've literally seen videos and videos of people making so much different builds towards this. Oh well, wow. I actually staggered him when... And somehow he's erased. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, but just look at it. Right. It's actually going insane. Like, I'm doing like 600 per hit or something. That's really good for chain blades. Honestly, if you're having trouble with any of these, with any of these, think not about the frost. Think on the other escalations, because frost is literally just all of them combined. And I believe I've proved my point. So, I hope you did like this guide such tutorial. Uh, I will... If you want me to, I'll put uh, some builds for this. Actually, I'll I'll link the builds, some builds that you could use, or you could just go and search for your own. It depends on what your playstyle is. But if you did like this this uh, guide, do leave a like. And if you're new here, do subscribe. Remember, as I said in at the start of the video, we're close to a hundred now. And I think hitting 100 will be a great milestone for me. So yeah, this has been Tiger Gaming. I'll catch you a lot in the next video. Peace out.